So there are five big drivers that help explain what's going on in the U.S. and global economies. The second big driver that I've been looking at, and when I was at the Dallas Fed, we looked at intensively, was technology-enabled disruption. We're used to uh, technology replacing people. Uh, you know, the railroads and cars replace the horse and buggy. We're used to machines, computers replacing people. That's not new. What is newer, uh, particularly over the last number of years, is distributed computing power. Advances in distributed computing have meant that technology replacing people, artificial intelligence, uh, other forms of technology have accelerated in replacing people. So what's an example today? If you work at a call center today, and there's still call centers today, those jobs are, are likely, most of them likely not to exist uh, over the next number of years. This is going on in every industry, certainly manufacturing. In the service sector, it's not as easy for technology to replace people. If you go in and get your hair cut, still done by a human being, if you go to a restaurant, they're using more technology, but you still, you still need human beings. What many people worry about is with technology replacing people, there aren't gonna be enough jobs. My thought is, I think there are gonna be plenty of jobs. The issue will be, those jobs are gonna be different than the ones in the past. They're going to be more about managing technology rather than doing, for example, certain types of physical work. There's still going to be manual labor, but there are going to be many types of jobs that are simply going to require more training. may not need a college degree, but you'll need some training on how to manage technology or logistics. I think what we're finding is there's a skills gap in the United States. There are many more skilled job openings than there are workers. Uh, skills training has never been more important, but many of those skills training jobs are to train people on how to use technology. Forty years ago, if I, my car broke down, I'd take it into an automotive repair person and they would repair my car. Today that person is called an automotive technician and it takes a lot more technology training to fix a car now than it did 40 years ago. That person also gets paid a lot more money and it's a lot better job than it was 40 years ago. But the point is there's all these changes going on. So one of the, the benefits of technology uh, is that as the workforce growth in the United States decelerates due to aging, the growth of technology-enabled disruption has actually helped offset that and also created a whole uh, span of new jobs for people to take and maybe do later in their careers. What it also means though is skills training and more advanced training and literacy are more important than ever. When you go out and do a survey of businesses and they tell you the biggest uh, skill uh, that they're looking for, it's people that are literate, can read, can write, can communicate, and this is important uh, to mention because our literacy rates, particularly among fast-growing demographic groups, are also deteriorating. Technology, I think, is an opportunity for the United States, but we're gonna have to adjust how we think about jobs, training and retraining of people through their careers, and we need to elevate the importance of literacy and skills training so that we can prepare workers uh, to work throughout their careers. To learn about the five structural drivers of the global economy, continue watching our clips on the Robert Stephen Kaplan YouTube channel or visit robertstephenkaplan.com.